Welcome back to Create Craft Costume, where we think creating or crafting is as close to magic as we are going to get. This is Cheryl, our fabric wizard, and I am Ashley, her geeky trained apprentice. And today we are going to make some magic for some mamas because we have two DIY baby shower gifts that are very beginner friendly that we, you will be able to give to any mama in your life. They came about over 40 years ago when my grown children were babies. I bathed them every night in the bathtub starting at six weeks and on. Problem is, as I'm kneeling by the tub, I get soaked, they get splashed. I don't have to reach for a towel. This came about to solve all of those bathing problems for baby and mama. So let's start sewing. For our first project, we are going to be making a bathing baby apron. And aside from our thread, the only thing you need is a towel and double fold bias tape. The double fold is really important, otherwise you won't be able to get around the terry cloth. These come in three yard packages, so you are only going to need one of them. Once you prep the towel, so you're going to remove all of the tags, both inside and out, your standard towel measurement is 30 inches. So to start, we are going to fold this in half and mark the halfway point. We have decided that 15 inches is the center of the towel. Now that is the center front of the apron. We need an opening there for the neck and to cut out the space for the sleeves. So we're putting that 15 on the 6 because now we're going to go up to the 12 and down to the one that gives us our 12 inch space. That again will be the center front of the apron. The straps will go up from there. But again, this is the center front of your apron. You can make that larger or smaller if you wish, but we've made a bunch of these and we think that 12 inches is pretty, pretty standard. 12 inches goes about shoulder to shoulder. Right. So it really keeps you dry right. when you are bathing that baby. Gives that baby a nice place to lay their head right there on your chest as well. Okay, now we've got the space for neck. We're gonna move right on to mark the space for our arms. So from the corner of the towel, again at the top of the towel, we're going to measure down 12 inches. We're gonna mark that with a pin. We do the same thing on both sides. So once you've got that marked on both sides, we're going to take our long ruler with the tailor's chalk or pencil, whatever you're marking with, and mark a straight diagonal line from the 12 inch mark at the, the neck to the 12 inch mark down the side of the arms. Okay, now we're gonna get ready to cut. You may be wondering why I'm cutting these individually. Several reasons. The first one is that terry cloth will shift dramatically if you lay it on top because of all the loops. So you need to cut them out individually and take as long a bites as you can with the scissors. That's going to give you less little fraying out. Now it's time to turn this into an apron and we are going to do that using the double fold bias tape from earlier. Two tips, definitely don't iron this and make sure that you are putting the terry cloth all the way inside that fold because that way it won't pull out from use. Now, we aren't going to cut these straps at all, but what we do need to determine is how big the neck loop needs to be. We're not making this adjustable because I really hate any extra weight or knots or anything at the back of my neck. So we are going to make this loop 21 inches. And you do that by simply determining where you want the apron to stop on your chest and wrapping a measuring tape around your neck like so. You can determine how low or how high you want the center back to be. That will make the measuring of this easier and it won't be adjustable, but it will be a lot more comfortable on the back of your neck. Okay, now we know that the center back opening has to be 21 inches. So I folded it at the center back. We're marking down half of 21, which is 10 and a half, putting a pin there. So that will measure out the 21 to double check. We'll open that out, measure it, and it does exactly measure 21 inches. So that is the opening for the neck. 
Now, as far as the bias tape, one thing you need to know about bias tape, it is purposely made that the edges are uneven. Do not adjust that fold. It is set this way so the longer edge is on the underneath side, the shorter edge is where you're going to sew on. That way when you're sewing it, you will make sure that it's easier to catch that bottom edge because it sticks out a little bit further than the top edge. Make sure you sew it on with the longer edge underneath. So basically, when you're pinning, make sure that you know which one's the top and which one's the bottom, or you're going to have a fun time figuring that out at the sewing machine. Exactly. So as you can see here, to begin pinning, we are making sure that we are making room for that 21 inch neck loop. So the two pins that we measured, the 21 inches, that's what's gonna start our center front. So we have that loop running down in front and we are going to pin the sides accordingly. One tip with pinning, especially if you have not dealt with terry cloth before, again, use the bias tape to your advantage. So make sure that you tuck that corner in as far as you can into the bias tape. Now that you have finished pinning, this is what it's supposed to look like before you take it over to the sewing machine. You're going to start at one end of the tie, go all the way up and down the other side. You've got several options to, to use as you're sewing this on. You can always use a straight stitch, that's totally fine. You'll need to lengthen that out because terry cloth is quite thick. You can also use a zigzag, not my favorite because I think it makes it look very homemade. You will rarely see zigzags in a, in a ready-to-wear item. You, you will always often see what's called the serpentine stitch or it's the three-point zigzag. And that is what we are using on our settings today. Mm -hmm. Yep, and just lengthen that stitch out. Now, when you get to the ends, you've got two options. We like to finish things around here, so we're turning the ends under and we are going to stitch across the bottom of that so we don't have any edges out. You can also tie the ends and just leave them hanging out. That's a lot of people do that. You'll see them ready to wear like that. Not our favorite place, so we just turn that under inside the double fold bias tape and off you go. Okay, so here we go. Um, Ashley was just teasing me, and which she does quite regularly, and I think I ought to explain to you what she's teasing me about. As you can see, as I'm sewing along that bias tape, I'm just ripping along there, but then I come to the terry cloth. It goes much slower. You can do a couple of things if you're, if you're a little intimidated by this. You can see how I am making sure that corner is up in that terry cloth. I want that to stay up there and keep that strong so that apron will hang straight. At this point, you can slow your machine down with the gears. Some of you might be wondering why I didn't mention loosening or decreasing the tension on the presser foot. It's because I'm going from two layers of the bias tape to the terry cloth. That seems like a waste of time to me. It is certainly an option. If your machine does better with less pressure when you go through something heavy like that, certainly adjust it. I do not, it's just, it takes some time to do that. But again, here, this the speed is slower. I'm adjusting that terry, making sure that is in there as tight as it can possibly be. I also personally like to lower the presser foot, so pu putting most of the power back into the presser foot. Uh, she taught me that, and that was a really big help for going around particularly thick items. That's exactly right, yes. There's a lot of things built in your machine that are built in there to help you. So get to know what your machine can and cannot do, but adjusting the presser And look, the now foot. the sewing foot never stops because okay. she's, she's back on cotton. <laughs> One more tip when choosing your stitching. Decorative stitches are of course an option, but it will take you forever and a day to get around the terry cloth, the, the more complicated your stitch is. So just keep that in mind if you wanna do something any more complicated than the serpentine stitch. Now, again, to finish this off, we are tucking both of our ends into the bias tape. As you can see her folding this here, and we are sewing across that just to make sure the ends don't fray out. Now, at this point, believe it or not, you're actually done. 
However, if you want to maximize not only the towel that you bought, but also the excess pieces that you cut off, now we're gonna teach you how to add a hood to this same apron. Taking the two arm pieces that we cut off earlier, we are using the acrylic ruler to show that if you line up these seams, they are more uneven than we would like. So we are taking the time to square up these two pieces to make them more equal before we sew these two pieces together. We are going just above the bottom seam because we will be using the bottom seam where we cut off in order to line it up with the corner on our towel. Now we are cutting these two pieces separately because remember terry cloth does shift, but once the edges are squared up, it is time to sew these two together. Make sure you are doing half inch seams because quarter inches will pull out. But the next part is a really good fabric stash buster because we are going to add a lining with a piece of flannel or fleece that we have lying around. So our first step is to lay the terry cloth on top and we are gonna cut it slightly larger because we would like a piece of the flannel showing outside. Once our pattern or our template is cut, it is time to sew the two lining pieces together. Then we will layer them on top of each other. Oh look, there's the iron. <laughs> I love my iron. So don't, don't iron the bias tape, but do iron down the seams because it'll make it easier to uh, prepare the hood. Exactly. And don't hesitate to iron this terry cloth. It will make that seam flat. Do not freak out as this changes colors as I iron that. It's going to be just fine. Iron it and then you just fluff it right back up. There you go. And then you've got a nice flat seam on your terry cloth. And that makes it a lot easier when we start folding in these edges. Exactly. Again, we cut it larger because we wanted the edge to outline the hood. So we are going to fold all of the edges in, pin them down, and then Cheryl's gonna walk us through how we finish those corners. <laughs> okay, here we go. We are going to turn this into a mitered corner. This is the, the center corner that goes in the very bottom corner of the towel. Fold one end in, fold the other one in, and then this is the part that everybody freaks out about. You just tuck that under so that it matches at the point right there. The trick is fold it all the way down as you're coming down that towel, all the way to the corner. Then when you have to bend it into the corner, you're not messing with all that extra fabric. Just okay. like that. And you can pin it down, and I promise it's doable. Now, on these other two corners, we're just doing straight corners because that's the way I like this to look on this towel. So that one is just fold the side that goes along the bottom on top and just fold that down so it makes a nice square. We can do the same thing on the other side. So you just roll it on up, make sure that's tucked in the end, pin that down, just fold it in and there you've got the straight edge down to a miter, down to an, um, just up the center seam and then down to the other straight edge corner. So the only one left is the top one. So to eliminate some bulk up here, I'm going to trim off that edge. You can leave this as a, as a point and do a mitered corner on that. That is not my preference. I think it's really pointy. The babies grab on it or it pokes them in the eye. So we're going to trim off that edge so it's not going to be flat. We're just going to cut off the edge right there. And if you cut it off straight, the corners magically match and pin it in place and you are ready to go okay so we've got the binding attached all turned around in the nice corners on the hood we are now going to just head over to the sewing machine stitch that binding down then after that the only other thing to do is to attach the hood to the towel so we're going to come over here. We're going to start in the middle. I do not recommend starting on the corners. One, you've got them pinned in place nicely. Starting and stopping at a corner, the likelihood of getting a pucker is very high. So I start in the middle. You can go around and probably get her all the way around without any kind of a pucker, which is the goal. And as you will see, it matches very prettily in the middle at the end. Hopefully that's the goal here. Also, lengthen your stitch because now you're sewing on two form, two, several layers of flannel as well as the terry cloth. So make sure you lengthen out that stitch. If you're struggling to move the material forward, aka what I've done, 
it is probably because your stitch is too short. Exactly. That is exactly right. Now, if you're paying attention, you can see that that is a little screwdriver that Cheryl is using on the fabric. This is one more tip when working with bulky items or fabric that is shifting that I've never seen anyone do except her. She will use tools to help maneuver the fabric where it needs to be as it is going through multiple thicknesses. So anything that is long and can get under that presser foot, she will use to move the fabric back to where she wants to help avoid buckles. And this has been particularly helpful on things like terry cloth or sewing through lots of layers. To have the color of the towel, the border and then the color of the towel frame it so that's kind of how i like to to put it and as you notice it's not laying exactly flat that's what we want because we have a little head that's got to fit in there and i'm going to leave this above this hem because sewing through the hem of the towel which is thick and this is going to be a job for a commercial machine good luck yeah so we are going to put it above that also depending on the quality of your towel, or I have had $30 towels that this will shrink. If it shrinks, it's not gonna bother the hood. The hood will stay in place. So that's another benefit of putting it above the seam. Years of experience. For real, duly noted. <laughs> and to make the hood so it's not just a flap, you're going to sew up. I usually sew up about to the bottom of the trim. Then you have a nice little hood. It'll be a That's little bigger when we you. take these pins out. Okay, so now we're going to go sew right along the edge, down there, down there, and up there. This is how they're worn. Over the head of the mother. See, it sits right across the top. Tie it in the back. So now, as the baby's splashing, you're not wet. And when the baby's done, which is probably going to be in the tub or the sink, you'll put this up on the side of the tub or the sink or the mat. Get that baby, put this, his little head right in there, in that little soft pocket. Snuggle him right up here, wrap him up. And you've got a fabulous little baby to talk to and to dry. And he can't slip out the bottom because heaven knows Little babies are slippery when they're wet, but he's tucked in safe inside you. He's right against you. You're dry. He's got this little hood. You can just snuggle him and dry him off or her. They're great. Admittedly, this next one is more of a hack than a DIY because all we are doing is adding a zipper to the bottom of the baby swaddler that mothers of newborns are fairly fond of. And I need you to know I have never done this. I have maybe put one zipper in in my life. So the left is going to be our fabric wizard, Cheryl, showing me how to add this. The right footage is going to be the apprentice doing it for the very first time. So I need you to know this is doable, but you better pay attention to the instructions as you will see. Okay, first thing you need is a zipper. I sent Miss Ashley to the store for plastic zippers, which is precisely what she bought. And that is exactly the wrong thing. I should have said polyester zipper. Told you I was new at this. But she follows directions incredibly well. However, the reason is look at the different sizes in these zippers. The plastic zippers are meant for jackets or hoodies, heavier weight things like that. That also makes them more expensive. <laughs> exactly. The polyester zippers are very lightweight for going in the cotton knits that we're putting in the bottom of these very very light zipper easy not stiff at all and a very very small coil so we want polyester not plastic okay now to unpick this don't freak out when you think you have to unpick surging it's a lot easier than it looks on one side of the seam the loops that overcast it will be looser go to that side snip those threads 
and unpick it that way. If you try and unpick it at the edge like you would a normal seam, you will destroy your fabric. We have such a small seam allowance, you want to keep that fabric as intact as possible. And as far as how much you're going to unpick, if you're doing a nine inch zipper, you want the, in, the opening only slightly larger. And by slightly, I mean a quarter of an inch on each end. So maybe nine inch zipper, unpick nine and a half. Any larger than that, you're just gonna have to sew it back up once your zipper's installed. So, if you unpick more, I will show you how to fix that. So we unpicked that. Now, the beauty of unpicking this is this is already folded back where we need it to be. We are going to put the zipper in like the bottom right along here. Tricky part is, again, you've got to think, what are you trying to accomplish? We're trying to put the zipper here. So we've got the right side of the zipper and the right side of that with the opening still in the opening there. So this is how this is going to go. So remember how the first thing she said is make sure you understand what you're doing? Well, I pinned this inside out because right now this would be on the inside of the baby swaddler. So make sure when she says put right sides to right sides, that's what we're accomplishing probably think this is silly, but it's very easy to get over the sewing machine and get this zipper in upside down. And then that is a nightmare we don't want to have to unpick. Normally wouldn't pin this much, but when it's on a curve, I want to make sure we keep the same curve at the bottom and not stretch it out. I would normally pin this much. <laughs> Okay, we are sewing down that side. We've got it pinned in. We're starting where the coil of the zipper starts and we're sewing to the end of the zipper where the coil stops, which is precisely the little valuable tidbit that I neglected to tell Ashley. So therefore, I didn't understand why she was starting or stopping in certain places. So you will see, I finished mine differently. Instead, also, cause I overpicked, I actually sewed my side down in entirety. I went from the end of the full tab the, to the other end of the full tab. And I did the same thing on the other side. So as you will see in the footage, the ends of our zippers look different. Doesn't mean you can't fix it. And I unpicked too much, so you'd have to fix it anyway. But I did just learn during the filming that you sew the zipper on by the the length of the coil and that would have that would have been quite helpful so yes we're all yes. we're still learning it's fine um teacher neglect i wasn't testing her i actually totally forgot to tell her that and when i told her just a minute ago that zippers are measured by the length of the coil that's when we had this epiphany on why they went in differently <laughs> so now you've got the inside scoop when i said i had not done zippers i was not lying <laughs> Okay, now your zipper is sewn in both sides. As I said before earlier, mine is sewn in from the length of the coil. So now I'm turning it to the other side. We're going to close in those ends. The best way to close it in is to do a bar tack at the end of the coil just to make sure you secure that in. And then on mine, since I don't trust surging, sorry, all you surging enthusiasts, but it can come undone if a thread is snipped. And since we did some unpicking, I'm going to zigzag over the last little bit of that seam up to the bar tack. Trim your ends and you are done. And then on the inside, I would cut off those zipper tabs so they don't get in that little one's toes. So now, uh, cutting off the zipper tabs on mine wasn't an option because mine are sewed in both all the way. As you'll see, my hole is a little bit bigger because again, I did unpick more. So I not only did a bar tack on both of them, I did zigzag up the rest of that seam. So even if by mistake, you know, you get distracted and you create a 10 inch zipper when it's seven, you can close in that seam again, but you do not have to sew all the way up and down the tab to keep those in. Those can be cut off later. <laughs> And on a completely related note, do you think those infant swaddlers look like straight jackets? <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. The first time I saw those, I thought, what? 
I get it. I get the point. You want to wrap up a baby. Here, they're used to being all confined up. You want to wrap them up, have them nice and tight. I get it. But we did it with receiving blankets back in the old day. You wrap one corner over this way, tuck it in. Wrap the other corner over this way, tuck it in. Take the bottom corner and put it up here. And there's a crucial material Why? that is not involved. Why? <laughs> because you take that down and you can change the baby. He's still all wrapped up or she's still all wrapped up. Change the body, put the back up. Happy baby. I think that's the purpose behind these. However, there is enough Velcro in it to wake up the entire house. Amen. This is super deluxe Velcro, I think. You open it up and that baby is awake. But you have to open it up to get the flap down so you can get to the, it's way too much work. So I decided there's gotta be a better way. So I got polyester zippers, put it in the bottom of the seam right there and lightweight, unzip that zipper, reach in, do your little thing, zip it back up. Again, sleeping baby, happy baby, happy house, life is good. And she has plenty of people who are begging to help her with that, which is part of the reason we did this video. So if you would like to see a bloopers reel involving this video, please make sure to check out our Instagram. While you're there, if anyone else puts a zipper in the first the first time or at all, that's fine. Uh, I would love to see it because you got to celebrate the little wins in life. And speaking of little wins, each like, subscribe, comment, those are little wins for us. Yes. It helps us grow our YouTube channel. So if you know of anyone who can benefit from this or you just want to see more of our content, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you in our next video. Thank you. Take care.